basically I just want to react to how this looks. It is the AI generated advert that Toys R Us dropped a couple of weeks ago. I have not watched it through yet. I've seen a couple of little frame grabs here and there just uh, in the context of news stories that have been out and about, but I haven't watched the video. So I wanted to react to it and talk about it as if I was looking at something that was a, a piece of media that had been traditionally made and critique it on that um, set of parameters, but it's going to be hard. I, I'm, I have my opinions and biases um, to do with AI, so we'll see how that goes. I've got it loaded up just here, and we're going to see how um, how this goes. So let's uh, let's get this started. Did you ever wonder how Toys R Us and Jeffrey the Giraffe came to be? The son of a bike shop owner, Charles Lazarus, had a vision. Back. Okay that would go on to change toy stores forever. Um, I don't think that it looks fantastic, uh, just from the point of view of like art direction and, uh, the directing of, I'm going to say talent, but, but you know what I mean? Things on screen that are meant to be human or things that people are interacting with, the way things are, um, are happening. I don't think that the art direction of it is particularly strong. So if I was critiquing this um, as a piece of media that uh, I'd shot and it's going away and looking at it, it seems like, for example, when he's uh, standing there and his dad's in the background after we've seen a shot of his dad kind of genuflecting with a ray of sunlight coming in behind, his dad's in the back just like like a static block character that hasn't been animated. So I know that it's something which animators have struggled with for quite a long time um, the way that you actually impart character and personality to things. And a great example of this, of course, is the Pixar lamp. You know, that that is a lamp. It is a very basic animation. It's something which I'm sure a lot of uh, kids just with a computer can whip up in Blender in no time these days. But the personality and the animation, the way that it moves, that is where the magic is. And it didn't really feel like this piece of AI generated video, um, which was made with Sora, I believe, had that personality, that um, that craftsman's touch to the way that the animation was there. Now, in terms of how the actual quality of the rendering looked, it's it's frightening how quick it has come around to this point where you can just generate something like that and not have to um, learn any software necessarily you know you don't have to know how to do 3d animation you don't have to know how to um, do all of the different things that you see going on in this video like you know that the sunlight coming in and the way that works and all of the different models you might be using to make certain things happen like sparkles or whatever you don't need to know that you just need to know roughly what you want and you type it in and either it is it or it isn't it and then it kind of forms up now I'm trying not to let my biases get two in front of everything just here but I think that the overriding thing for me is it lacked personality and character in terms of the actual animation and then the sense of like weighty realism I want to say um, Wally is a fantastic example of this and I'm not saying that this has to be Wally and not everything has to have weighty realism but Wally they approached it in a very interesting way for an animated film. Uh, my son used to love it when um, when he was little and I watched it loads and loads of times with him and then on, I don't know, the fifth or sixth viewing I was just looking at it and going, this is really nicely shot, you know, and I was looking at the, the way that the focus changed. I was like, it's anamorphic, you know, they didn't have to do that, why have they done that? 
And I looked into it more and more, and then I found out Roger Deakins was brought on to consult with the the animators and the people doing all of the volumetric lighting and things within um, Wally to talk to them, not necessarily direct the lighting for it, but to talk to them about how he would approach something if they were to do it in the real world. So a great example would be if uh, they want a nice big soft source to illuminate um, whatever it is, uh, Wally. They could put it in between the camera and Wally, and then make it invisible. So they could just do that, have it be you know twelve foot by twelve foot in between. The, it's perfectly flat. It's perfectly um, soft. But Roger Deakins say, well, I, I wouldn't do that. I would have like a twelve by twelve or a twenty by twenty further away, and then I would have some neg here, and I'd do this and I'd do that. And because of that constrained real world approach, it then started to carry a little bit more believability and weight and that's that's for something which looks quite cartoonish in a lot of ways you know that the characters um the settings even can sometimes be really um extreme and cartoony in it but it carries a weight and a believability and a realism because people just they, they know what light does they know how it is meant to be even if they don't have the ability um as a cinematographer would, to dissect what is actually going on they see it all the time in their real lives so something like this, where there's just lots of things that are slightly off about it, um, and then the characters are a little bit static, and I don't know, sometimes like the, the giraffe was just looking almost wan and sad. He wasn't looking kind of awed and like thrilled at being brought to life. So that's what I'm feeling on my first viewing of it. And it's it's something which I think Toys R Us have sort of owned. They've They've come out and they've said this is what we've done. They didn't try to say that, yeah, we did this with a bunch of animators. And obviously that's garnered a lot of attention. And we're only going to see more and more of this. Uh, but you really do still need someone as a craftsman attached to this to be able to make it feel a little bit more believable, a little bit more rich, lively, whatever it is, you know, um, having that personality of sparkle uh, between you know, the, the, the characters that are meant to be um, there dreaming, just thinking of how the toy shop could be and then the giraffe comes to life and that is probably, you know, telling the story of the, the guy who came up with Toys R Us, that's probably meant to be a very magical um, kind of awe-inspiring thing and I didn't get that from this. Um, I, for other things, you know, like um, The Tale of Thomas Burberry, uh, which Burberry did a few years ago where they had real actors, they had a load of different scenarios, and that just felt so rich and deep because they had a story that they had written. They had excellent cinematography. They had fantastic actors. They had a great director attached to it. And all of that, even though they were tiny little vignettes, it wasn't actually the whole story. It just made it feel so tangible or up. There's another great example, five minutes and you probably have more emotions <laughs> within those five minutes than a lot of films in their entire run. And it's all animated, but it's beautifully done. And some of it's not even moving that much. It's just subtle and thoughtful. So what is my opinion on this uh, AI generated effort for Toys R Us? I think that it is amazing that it's possible. I don't think that it's a great example of an advert. I don't think it's a great example of an animated advert if we were just weighing it on on those parameters. I think that there's so many things about it that are flawed. I think that it's obviously going to go down in history as, you know, this point that things changed and it will have made a lot of people just go, ah, we could just do this. And that's that's scary. And this is where I get into the biases. That's scary for animators, art directors, uh, all the people who are associated with these things. You know, it is not often that you get a uh, a small one-man band making a full animated advert. That's that's pretty rare. This is a lot of people who are involved in this. And if now you know an advertising agency or a company are seeing this and going, well, we can just. Uh, crack one of those out and it isn't just animated that's the thing this is made to look a little bit pixar toy story whatever it is but then we're saying this could be actually photo real this could be an advert for a brand that's 
that's a whole other kettle of fish and I will get into that I'm going to do another one of these where I do talk about AI and the way I see it sitting within the industry um, drop your opinions down below what do you think of this uh, what do you think is good about it what do you think is flawed about it how do you think it uh, is going to influence uh, the way that brands you know approach their advertising over the next year two what do you see in the future drop any comments you got down below I will uh, have a read of them and try and reply scary stuff